All right, let's get started. My name is Allison, and I'm a member of the Customer Success Associates here at YCharts. Hosting our webinar today is Connor Kitko of the marketing team and Rushi Shah, a member of our product team. Today, we're taking an inside look at our quarterly econ summary deck that we produce for all of our YCharts users. Connor and Rushi will take you through the deck slide by slide, giving analysis and also insights to how we create these visuals at YCharts. Please keep in mind that the content of this webinar is meant for educational purposes only and is not intended to be used as investment advice, nor is YCharts acting as an advising party regarding client funds in any way. Finally, as always, a recording of this webinar will be made available on YCharts and sent to all attendees. Now I'm going to pass it over to Connor to get us started. Thanks, Allison. Good afternoon, everyone. And as Allison said, my name is Connor Kitko. I'm joined today by my colleague, Rushi Shah. How are you doing today, Rushi? Doing well, doing well. Getting used to this new normal. How about you? About the same. For everyone listening, Rushi and I usually sit three feet across from each other, but today we're going to try our best to do this webinar from our homes. Rushi and I also teamed up back in January to get, run you guys through the charts of the decade. Uh, if you're interested in that webinar, it can be found uh, through the support topics links on YCharts. But today, we're walking through the economic summary deck for the first quarter of 2020. We put this PowerPoint together every quarter and share it with our clients so that you guys have top-notch resources to use when communicating with your own clients and prospects. Now, we've heard from a lot of you that you're getting significantly more client questions these days, which is understandable. So today we're going to break down the data and trends that we're seeing on each slide of this presentation. We'll also give some recommendations on how you could explain these trends to your clients. And finally, we'll show you how to recreate some of these visuals in YCharts. Any YCharts users can download the full deck from within YCharts. Rushi is steering for us. He's going to jump into YCharts and in the top toolbar, he'll click on support and support topics is the first option there. And then right under client resources, you can see presentation materials. Rushi's going to click Q1 2020 economy summary deck. And from here, you can just click this image to download. Once you do that, you can feel free to take the deck and really make it your own, you know, adding your own logo or making additional changes on slides before sharing it with your clients. This is why we created the deck in the first place, because we want to give you guys a great starting off point for when you're interacting or, you know, creating touch points with your clients. There are two halves to this PowerPoint. The first half being a fairly standard review of broad market performance. This is every quarter that we release this deck. The first half is pretty consistent, but then the second half is made up of charts or visuals that we here at Y Charts have been looking at over the last quarter, and they explain some of the really interesting kind of secondary storylines going on in the market right now. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Rushi to get us started. Thanks, Connor. Yeah, and, and before we jump right into that first slide, uh, just to show you a few more of the functionality that you have within PowerPoint. So, um, you know, we have this theme on here that's more Y Charts branded, but feel free to take this PowerPoint, uh, change the themes within uh, PowerPoint, and and make it firm branded if you'd like, so that you can use this for client materials. Um, you can definitely add in slides here, delete and and do anything there. So this is available for our for our Y charts um, users, and so you can really go through these slides and and analyze it the way you'd like. So let's get started with the first slide here, which is stock market's performance. Um, so we all are pretty familiar with with what's been going on with the markets. It's been it's been pretty pretty volatile here to start off 2020. Markets were down because the economy was shut down and expectations of a recession was looming after um, all of the COVID-19 lockdowns started. So here's some notable statistics that led to some of these pretty negative numbers for the U.S. markets and the world markets as well. Uh, first off, from February 20th, which was the market high to March 23rd, the market fell more than 33%. And when I say the market, I'm referring to the S&P 500 index. Um, so as of the end of the quarter, it ended down about 19.60%. 
So that 33% was was pretty drastic, and, and the volatility index really showed this. So um, the volatility index, the VIX, went to the, its highest intraday level ever. So that's just another telling point of what the market did during this time. For you advisors out there, it's it's great to keep importance of communicating with your clients during these volatile times. So at YCharts, we know the importance of this, and we formulated many tools like this econ deck that we're looking at today to make sure that you have enough tools and features around your client communication strategy. We also had a webinar that showed last month called Playbook for Communication and Collaboration During a Bear Market. So I'd recommend checking that out because we show a lot of functionality within YCharts and a lot of those tools that you have access to as a YCharts professional user. You can find that webinar in the support section. So Connor, here's just an overall view at the U.S. sector performance. Yeah, Rushi. So we just talked about the market as a whole, and now this slide looks at the 11 S&P sectors, and we further group those 11 into three groups, starting at the top, cyclical sectors, sensitive sectors, and defensive sectors. So the story here is that really no one was safe in Q1 of 2020. Sectors fell anywhere from 12% to 50%, and with technology being down the least and energy being down the most, we've seen what's happened with oil recently, and it's been a huge lag on the energy sector. That said, the defensive sectors still did their job by standing up to the sell-off better than either the cyclical or sensitive stocks on the whole. If relaying this information to a client or a prospect, I think it's worth noting that the defensive sectors could continue to be a great safe haven if you're expecting, you know, a recession or maybe a drawn out recovery. Uh, you know, people have been talking about that swoosh shaped recovery. But if you're thinking more along that V shape, the recovery kind of that we're seeing in the market right now, if you believe that that will continue, then the cyclical sectors, uh, so that would be real estate, consumer discretionary, materials, and financials, those cyclical sectors, historically, they lead the economy's recovery after a sell-off. Um, you know, we, we will demonstrate some charting later on the webinar today, but just as an FYI, we made the charts on the left using the platform's fundamental charting tool, and then these data tables on the right, we uh, used YCharts comp tables to create. And so now Rushi is going to talk about some asset class performance. And Rushi, what are we seeing here? Yeah, Connor, so there's some interesting data here. And I'm sure you've seen the headlines in different asset classes and, and the way they've been performing lately. So this table here we created, and it's essentially a heat map. So you're looking at the year-to-date return column, which is where we um, – basically rank these asset classes. You can also see the indices on the right that we use to signify each of these asset classes. So you're seeing that towards the top, U.S. Treasuries outperformed the rest and commodities were down at the bottom. What we did here was we took the overall performances and we used our Y charts Excel add-in within Excel and created this table. And then we used conditional formatting to basically make it into a heat map. So you're seeing uh, the green colors being some of the higher performances in comparison to the red, which is the worst one. So if you want some help in creating this within Excel using our, our YCharts data, feel free to reach out to your support contact and we can show you, you know, how to create this kind of visual. And then the next slide is something similar, but more so on a quarter by quarter basis. So you're able to view these, these different asset classes going back historically. Now we're going to dig into some commonly used economic indicators on Y charts. So Connor's going to get us started with some of the Fed's recent policy actions. Yeah, Rushi. So everyone, just like last year throughout all of the uh, target rate hikes, everyone's been watching the Fed this year to kind of see how they're reacting to the coronavirus crisis. So this slide is a really good submission of the main levers that the Federal Reserve is pulling in efforts to bolster the economy during this stay-at-home shutdown. The Fed is doing a lot right now and a lot that's beyond what's shown on this slide. It, well, at least they said they're going to do a lot. Some of their uh, programs haven't even started yet. But these three measures that they're taking give us a really good high-level 
client-friendly view of some of the steps the Fed is taking. So from left to right, here's how you might break this down or explain it. Buying assets in the open market, this is that bottom left chart. This shows how the Fed has been buying up U.S. Treasuries and mortgage-backed securities in an effort to reduce the overall supply of bonds in the market, which will increase their prices in turn and keep interest rates in check. This chart in the top middle, we see they brought the federal funds rate down to zero after those consistent hikes that we saw throughout all of 2019. Since the federal funds rate is the basis for a lot of consumer credit products like mortgage loans and auto loans, when the Fed lowers their target rates, any kind of debt with an adjustable interest rate that regular people like you and I are paying, uh, our rates are also going to go down. So another step that the Fed is taking. And then finally, on the right here, the Fed is decreasing reserve requirements for its member banks. This was a huge aspect coming out of the 08 financial crisis where you can see in that gray recessionary period, reserve requirements really started to lift off. And uh, the recent reduction in reserve requirements is basically the Fed telling banks, hey, you should be lending this money out or lending out a larger percentage of your deposits in order to provide access to capital for business owners and individuals. And so now Rushi is steering once again, so please bear with us in case we have some brief interruptions, but we're going to show you how to create one of these charts, uh, especially with that awesome grayed out recessionary period. So we have on the chart U.S. total assets held by all Federal Reserve banks. It's shot up since the beginning of 2020 as the Fed has started buying up uh, treasuries on the open market. Rushi is going to click the chart options drop down just above our time range selections, and then he'll click Show U.S. Recessions. So we might actually need to extend our time frame a little bit here, yeah. And once Rushi gets that, you know, 2008 through 2010, there we go with our gray recession bar. Um, this is an excellent feature of fundamental charts. If you're ever comparing or contrasting the effects of the current coronavirus crisis, to what we saw back in the 08 financial crisis, then graying out that recession is a great way to call out, hey, here's how the trend looked during and immediately after the last recession, and we're expecting it to be the same or different for these reasons. So we'll get back into the deck now, and uh, Rushi, what have we been seeing in some indicators regarding housing? Yeah, Connor. So this this is one of our common slides that that's pretty popular with with people looking within the housing market. So you're looking at three things here. Here on the left, you're seeing mortgage rates and origination. So we have the 30-year mortgage rate, which is at record lows right now, which is actually causing quite a spike in the overall U.S. mortgage originations and refinances. So you're seeing that in the news that a lot of people are refinancing right now to get that attractive rate. At the same time, though, on kind of the negative side of the spectrum, you're seeing the overall prospective buyers and just homes that are present and, and, and being sold has really taken a dive lately. So you're seeing kind of a change in the, in the supply and demand here going on in the housing market. Um, so all of these different indicators that you're looking at on both of these fundamental charts can be found in our economic data section on Y charts. Down here below, we have an indicator review section. So if you wanted to access this, we actually have a section on Y charts that I can show you. So if I go into the dashboard here and I hover over tools and click on Excel, all Y charts professional users have access to our Excel add-in and it's a great tool to connect all of the data that's on Y charts to your Excel sheets uh, with just one-time download. So we have this download feature here and then we actually have these pre-can templates that you can access uh, once you sign on. So we have quite a few here, and the one that we used for that slide in the econ deck is down in our macroeconomic section. So I can click on the macroeconomic overview template, and you can see that this template will have some of the most popular macroeconomic indicators. And um, as long as you just go ahead and update this, it will pull in the latest data for all of these important indicators. So we basically took this and made it for just the housing 
market indicators and went ahead and displayed that on the actual slide. So I'm going to jump right back into the, the PowerPoint so that Connor can talk about um, interest rates and the yield curve. Yeah, Rishi. So we have two elements on this uh, slide right here. On the left, we have a table of the yields for different bond categories. And then on the right is the yield curve. Uh, we're looking at the yield curve at a few different points in time, which I'll get into. But let's start with the table on the left. You can see in this most recent quarter ending 331 2020 there's kind of a spread developing between corporate debt and government debt this is that typical flight to safety that's really common during a sell-off as investors are buying up government debt u.s treasuries you know the safest security out there and then they are at the same time they're selling corporate debt and yields are drastically increasing uh especially for higher risk debt like that first row is triple C rated corporate debt, and it's currently yielding more than 18%. Now let's move over to that yield curve chart on the right. The current yield curve is shown in green. The uh, curve from three months ago is in yellow, and the curve from one year ago is in blue. You can see that we're in a much more normal curve shape now with longer term interest rates being higher than those interest rates in the short term, but Overall, you know, the effect of the Federal Reserve lowering the federal funds rate is that uh, rates are about half of what they were a year ago. And it's crazy because last year we were saying, oh, the yield curve is inverted, but interest rates are still, you know, a half or a third of what they were pre-financial crisis. And now in 2020, we're saying that interest rates are half of what they were in 2019. Um, talking a lot about new normals, uh, it's pretty crazy to see the compression of interest rates across the board. And uh, we're going to show you guys where this yield curve template is. Rushi was just on the front end of Y charts showing you some stuff with the Excel add-in. Uh, on this same page, so Rushi clicked Tools and then Excel. And from here, on that template page, there's a template down there Rushi's going to click on in a moment called Treasury Yield Curve. So once you click on this and download it, very simple to update. You'll just go to the Yield Curve tab, and then in the top right there, you'll see uh, Curve Date. And you're just going to enter whatever as of date you want to use for the, you want to see the yield curve. And it'll automatically populate the, uh, you know, those previous periods as well. I do want to call out that our Excel add-in is only compatible with Windows computers. However, if you're on a Mac and you want to use the YCharts Excel add-in, you should reach out to your support contact because there are a few options for workarounds, which they'll be happy to discuss with you. Moving back into our slide deck, Rushi is going to talk about some international trade and what we've been seeing with uh, currency and Forex here. Yeah, definitely, Connor. So you're you're seeing various headlines on on trade from the different government, which is which is pretty funny in a time where we're all going through a pandemic, and and you're still seeing those tensions um, around the world. So quite a story here on this slide in particular. So what you're seeing in the top is, and again, we created this uh, within Excel, just pulling in our, our Y charts data. So we have exports and imports from different regions. So you're gonna see total here on the left, Canada, Mexico, and then towards the right, you're gonna see China and OPEC, which is where the story gets really interesting this quarter. So you're seeing on the quarter over quarter and year over year metrics for imports, being pretty negative for uh, China and OPEC. OPEC year over year is down 31% and China is down year over year about 18.9%. So quite a bit of a change there in, in the total imports. Down here at the bottom, you're seeing uh, different fundamental charts that we grabbed from Y charts. So you're seeing exchange rates and you're seeing that the dollar is really picking up strength here as well. So we actually annotated these charts with the with the average line. So you can, you know, when you're communicating with someone that might not be as familiar with these exchange rates, you can explain what that average or what that normal is in, in all of these different types of exchange rates. Looking to our next slide, let's see what leading indicators are saying about the future of the market. Yeah, Rushi, with all the uncertainty right now, 
investors are really just looking for something tangible that can point them in the right direction moving forward. So this table shows levels for some of the most commonly used leading indicators and how they've changed going all the way back to 2006. You'll notice that the leftmost columns here are quarters going back to Q1 2019. From that point on, uh, we're just showing annual levels. Now, let's break this down. So in Q1 2020, the only positives were that the 10-2 Treasury yield spread widened slightly, and then U.S. building permits increased. Now, every other leading indicator that we're showing here painted a bit of a more negative picture of the future. Specifically, indicators like consumer sentiment in the middle row and U.S. retail sales, or the change in U.S. retail sales at the bottom of the table, have turned for the worse pretty drastically quarter over quarter. And we can assume, you know, this is a direct result of stay-at-home orders, social distancing. People are doing a lot of online shopping, but not much physical retail shopping. And for the sake of time, I'll just say that to find this data in Y charts, you can click on data in the top toolbar and then economic indicators that will appear in your drop-down menu. And the page that you'll land on is kind of like home base for economic data on Y charts. It, you can go down a ton of different roads with labor and employment or consumer sentiment or GDP. Um, but this gives a really great summation of leading indicators uh, that you might want to be looking at or discussing with clients when you're talking about your one year outlook and beyond. Now, after the slide, after this slide, excuse me, this is the halfway point that I was talking about at the start of today's webinar. So we've just reviewed everything going on in the broader market and the economy. And now we'd like to dig into some of the more idiosyncratic visuals from the last quarter that tell some more unique stories. And Rushi's gonna kick that off with a pretty interesting data set that's now on Y charts. Yeah, definitely. So the first part of, of this unique data set that we add at the end of the econ deck is our coronavirus data. So this has been an important data set that we added onto Y charts because we know that as advisors are having these conversations about the market, it definitely helps having a story with all of the coronavirus data along with market data on the same chart or same visual. So we added all of this data on Y chart so you can find things like cases, hospitalizations, recoveries, and derivatives of these data points, for example, like cases per day for countries and also all of the US states. Um, so you have access to this data um, when you go into that same economic data section that we um, alluded to earlier in the, in the presentation. Also, an easy way to find this data, which I can just jump into Y charts now, is to just basically search for it at the top. So if I go here to the top of Y charts, I can search US coronavirus cases, and you'll start seeing all of those data points come up. So going back to this chart, we have the overall uh, world coronavirus cases, along with some other important countries that have been in the news, and then also the iShares MSCI World ETF to kind of show where the markets have been during this time. So you're seeing that as these curves started to really take off, the market started to sell off. And you're seeing that low here of 32.65% that was caused as soon as that happened. Um, ever since then, you're seeing the market have a, have a little bounce back while these curves are flattening as well. So it's a nice story that you can tell when you're talking to clients, when they wanna know, you know why coronavirus cases or at what point in time those cases were causing the market to sell off. You can do all that using our fundamental charting feature. So moving on to the next important part of our slides, we're gonna talk about some unemployment data. Thanks, Rishi. So you can see here, we're charting the unemployment rate across the top. Uh, we have initial claims for unemployment insurance in the middle section of this chart, and then total non-farm non payrolls at the bottom. So the trends here are pretty clear. Things were getting a lot better for unemployment ever since the financial crisis in 2008, uh, and then up until very recently when things have gotten uh, significantly worse from an employment perspective. So let's jump right into fundamental charts, Rushi. We have a chart with 
the unemployment rate, initial claims for unemployment insurance, and total non-farm payrolls. If you just typed in those three series, this is what it would look like, but this obviously is not what you just saw on the deck, and it's also not the most clean and friendly picture for sharing with clients. And you can't really get any insights from this either. So in this control panel on the left where we added our securities and the financial metrics, if you look just below under panel layout and then click panel per security, so now we get these series separated out into panels and you can kind of see a little more clearly what's going on here. So the panel per security function is great if you're charting uh, you know, a few different series or if you're charting a few stocks and multiple metrics for each one. That's a pretty common use case. So it just separates everything out so that it's a little bit easier to digest. Uh, there's another option, panel per financial metric, which we'll cover a little bit later in the webinar. But jumping back into the slide deck, Rishi is going to talk about some things going on in the retail sector. Yeah, definitely. So interesting times in in the retail sector because you're you're seeing, you know, with everyone locked down, not many people are able to go out to to stores or, or different restaurants and and things of that nature. So um, you're seeing that historic decline in retail sales and consumer sentiment at the same time. Um, so it's interesting because you're seeing this just overall drastic move in the real retail sales and consumer sentiment. But the story lies within the retail sector and what's what's really going on is pretty interesting. So we have this slide to initially show this drastic move, but we also added um, an extra slide here to break down retail sales. So as many of you are going through this, this lockdown, you're probably noticing uh, the things that you are still able to do and the things that you aren't at this time. So, and you're seeing that in the data as well. This chart here, which uh, we just created in our fundamental charting tool, breaks down the different industries within retail. So you're seeing here at the top, U.S. grocery store sales have seen quite a bump recently because of everyone having to go to grocery stores rather than being able to eat out. And then towards the bottom here, at the, um, you're seeing U.S. clothing and accessory store sales um, falling by more than 50% compared to last quarter. So you're seeing quite a spectrum of retail um, outputs from this last quarter, which is which is telling an interesting story and something that you really see in the market um, as you're talking to your clients about what their holdings are doing that are from the retail sector. This next slide that Connor is going to talk about um, really breaks down different things that we're seeing within different industries aside from retail. Yeah, Rushi. You know, just like public beaches, you might want to uh, avoid the beach stocks for the time being. Uh, <laughs> Jim Cramer at the folks over at CNBC love coming up with these new acronyms for us to learn and being forced to use. Here's another one for us. So BEACH stands for booking, entertainment, airlines, cruise lines, and hotels and resorts. Basically, beach stocks are all of those industries that have been hit the hardest by government stay-at-home orders outside of retail, which Rushi just discussed. So, for the most part, you know, talking about things that we're not able to do or we're just really not interested in doing at the moment, people are not planning vacations, they're not going to concerts or flying unnecessarily, definitely not taking cruises right now, and the performance of stocks in these industries really reflects that. So the future is still very cloudy, but some of these industries have actually begun to bounce back, you know, most notably airlines and some stuff in the entertainment uh, industries. But to demonstrate how we created this chart, where, you know, we just charted beach in green at the top, and then you can see booking companies in that pale orange, we're going to jump into model portfolios on Y charts. And, you know, as the name suggests, Model portfolios are used mainly uh, by YCharts users to track the performance of the investment strategies that they're recommending to their clients and prospects. But you can also use model portfolios to model or test the performance of really any basket of securities. So Rushi's going to click Create up here in the top right corner. And before you click on Blank Model Portfolio Rushi, 
Rushi, can you just click on new from template and then scroll through some of those pretty quickly? I just wanted to, we won't dig into this now, but just wanted to make everyone aware that Model Portfolios has these templated uh, portfolios and benchmarks that are a really great, you know, springboard or starting off, starting off point for any kind of analysis or portfolio you might want to uh, be building out. Our next webinar, which is on May 20th, is actually going to cover all of our templates and pre-canned analyses. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about those, you should definitely join us again in a couple weeks, and I'm actually hosting that one as well. But getting back on track uh, with our beach stocks, let's create a blank model portfolio, Rushi, and then we can just call the name of this portfolio booking companies. And then in our holdings, let's add trip.com, Expedia, booking holdings, and TripAdvisor. So these are the four big dogs in the booking space, and we can just equal weight these 25% for simplicity's sake. Um, and just a quick note, when you're adding up the target weights in any model portfolio, definitely make sure that they add up to 100%, otherwise the system won't let you move on to the next stage. Rushi would just click save in the top right corner at this point. Um, we did a little pre-work on this one, so if Rushi could just type in booking companies, he's already built out this portfolio, and it's great to, you know, you can add this to a chart or a watch list, and you can... Uh, just keep your thumb on how things are going for the booking industry and maybe see what kind of trends develop uh, for this group of stocks moving forward. So really awesome to see some model portfolios functionality and very relevant to the situation we're living through right now. Uh, Rushi, we're going to go back to the deck and talk about stocks versus bonds. Yeah, thanks, Connor. So this this chart's a good one because when you're an advisor and you're talking to your clients about the importance of you know risk and and talking about volatility, this this chart tells a nice picture of the overall um, S and P 500 total return and the Bloomberg Barclays U S AG. So stock versus fixed income or bonds, and you can see that you know bonds are pretty uh, straightforward and and don't have that much of a drawdown or that much of movement compared to the equities market so it's important to allocate yourself where you where you feel comfortable in in both of these asset classes down here we used another fundamental charting tool called correlation so i'm going to jump back into y charts to show you where you can find that um, so if you hover over tools and click on fundamental charts you're going to see a feature here called ratios, spreads, and correlations. So if I click on create, I can go ahead and select which type I would like to do. In this case, we're going to run a correlation. And we're going to look at the S&P 500 index. And I want the level of that index. And then I'm going to throw in the U.S. Ag. So that's going to be the Barclays, Bloomberg, uh, U.S. Aggregate Index, and I'm also going to select Level here. Once I hit Submit, it's going to go ahead and build that correlation for you. So you can see um, how correlated or uncorrelated these asset classes or these in indices are. So it's a nice little tool that you can add on um, to your normal chart that you're building out, which I can just add in those two indices up here as well. And it tells a nice story of, of the differences in performance and just overall movement of the indices. Um, that ratio spreads and correlations feature is something that all of our Y chart professional users have access to. So it's a great tool to have there with your charting. One thing that's worth calling out about that too is that you know you can see the correlation going more negative during these call out, during these sell-offs, excuse me. So it's a really good case for a diversified portfolio when things turn south for the market, you have negative correlation between, you know, fixed income and stocks. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, you know, going more into bonds and, and taking a closer look, uh, why don't you tell us about the volatility in fixed income? That's right. So volatility is usually a scary thing for uh, stocks and investors in equities, but for fixed income, at least in 2020, volatility has been a pretty good thing. 
So this chart features three ETFs, which in order they track long-term U.S. Treasuries, which is shown in purple. Uh, all investment grade bonds are being tracked by this ETF in orange, and then short-term U.S. Treasuries in blue. So you can see how uh, bonds broke way out of their normal volatility ranges and also appreciated in price due to these lower interest rates. The top panel's chart, we're looking at total return price percent change. And then in the bottom, we're looking at 30-day rolling volatility. As we know, when yields go down, prices go up and vice versa. And as such, investors with exposure to fixed income have significantly limited their downside through bonds price appreciation while equities have been selling off. Now, it's definitely important to note that should interest rates return to more normal ranges, bond prices could move lower in a hurry as prices for older debt issues are traded down to offer similar yields as those newer issues. And now Rushi is going to take us back into fundamental charts for a quick demonstration. We just have one of those ETFs, AG, which is tracking all investment grade bonds. And our time frame starting back at 2010. We have total return price is what we're charting. And we'll add 30 day rolling volatility under financial metrics. And I talked about this a moment ago earlier, but now under panel layout, let's click panel per financial metric. Because we're looking at still that AG, AGG ETF, but we have two metrics, so we're going to separate them out. Oh, excuse me, Rushi, could you please change the format to uh, normalized or percent change? So now we're seeing in the top panel that percent gain for uh, AG total return price over the 10 year period. but the side effect of that is that we're looking at 30-day rolling volatility, which is itself a is expressed as a percentage. We're not interested in seeing the percent change of the percent. We just want to see how it's trending over time. So let's click annotate at the top of our uh, control panel on the left. Click 30-day rolling volatility. And what we'll do is right here on force original data format, we'll turn that to on. This is a pretty good thing to do with most uh, percents, uh, most series that are expressed as percentages, because if you just want to see the trend over time, you, you don't want to see the, you know, the slope of that percent change. While we're here, let's also add max and average levels. And then when we pull this back into fundamental charts, when we click add, um, you can see that high of 23.4%, average of 3.4%, so obviously, volatility in bonds significantly higher than normal in Q1 of 2020. I'll turn things back over to Rushi for the last slide of today's webinar. Yeah, thanks, Connor. So this last slide is uh, something that we got from Ben Carlson, who talked about this in his blog post, and, and something that they covered um, when Caleb, our VP of product, and Ben did a webinar together last month just to talk about what's going on in the markets. And you're seeing that we have model portfolios created to show different risk levels. So you're seeing one model that's the conservative, and these 20, 80, 50, 50, 80, 20 are the stocked bond allocations. So you have these three models here at the top, and then towards the bottom you have the actual two ETFs that make up the three models up here. So you can see the clear picture that you know a lot of the conversation that advisors are having right now is are you positioned the right way for these market downturns? Um, you don't want to lose your nest egg uh, in a time like this, and, and you don't want to act in a way that's apart from the risk tolerance that you should have. So this chart here shows how a 2080 conservative model only had a drawdown of about 6.76%, 6 whereas a more aggressive 80-20 allocation fell as much as over 25%. So you're seeing that difference and the importance of, of managing risk here. And then at the bottom, you're just seeing the difference in performance between the Treasury bond ETF as well as the SPY ETF, which covers the S&P 500. So that's going to wrap up the overall presentation of these slides. I'm going to pass it back over to Allison. 
Thank you, Rushi, and thank you, Connor, for showing us a behind-the-scenes look at our first quarter economic summary deck for 2020. For any questions on the materials covered today, please feel free to reach out to your YCharts contact or YCharts.com slash support. I want to reiterate that a recording of this webinar will be made available in the support topic section of our site in case you need to review anything we went over or you want to share it with your colleagues. For any questions that you might have submitted to us during your presentation, your YCharts contact will be reaching out soon with the information you're looking for. Thank you all for attending today's webinar. We always appreciate any feedback that you might have for us, and if you have any questions regarding what we covered today, please feel free to reach out. Thanks.